Um, we are just getting a couple last things in place, but I think it looks like now. So, Robert, why don't you go ahead and take it away? All right. Hey guys, how how are you all today? Um, I'm glad that you're back uh, for another installment of our uh, of nature programming uh, today. Yeah, it's muggy, isn't it? Woo, it suddenly got real muggy here. Um, but it's summertime. So summertime is a great time to find insects. We find all sorts of insects. Um, they, you know, they're, they're, they're really, really starting to come out now. Um, I just found some cool ones this morning that I was very, very happy about before I came in. Um, guys, I hadn't seen yet this summer, so that makes me happy that I'm seeing those uh, now. They seem to be a little late. Um, but we'll talk about some of the insects that we see here at uh, Honey Hollow and that you see probably at your home as well. Uh, today, get ready. Uh, if I could do a, um, a good Ed Sullivan uh, impersonation, I would tell you that we're bringing on the Beatles. But uh, I can't really do that. So we'll just uh, make do as is. So today we are. We're going to talk about Beatles a little bit today. So let's get started with that. Uh, beetles. Beetles are wonderful, wonderful uh, creatures. Um, they are really, really neat. Um, I am a bug guy. I love insects. So uh, it's no surprise, should be no surprise, that I do get excited about beetles. So here we go. The beetles, oh my gosh. There are so many different kinds of beetles in our world. It is amazing the differences that you can find in them. Talk about one uh, wild group of uh, animals. Um, beetles are a large group of insects. Uh, they are huge. Uh, there are around 400,000 known species of living beetles, 400,000. That is nuts. Um, beetles make up around 40% of all known insects. That's 40%, that's a huge number. And 25% of all known animal life forms on our planet. That's a quarter of the life forms on our planet. Everything you know that's alive, a uh, quarter of it is a beetle. That is nuts. And just look at this, look at the variety. Look at the colors, the shapes, the, the, the sizes. Uh, uh, beetles are, are, are just naturally stunning. And you, it never um, fails to amaze me uh, just how wondrous uh, beetles can be. There we see some other ones here. Now we're talking about beetles. One thing you'll notice, you know, this is something where we get into talking about uh, bugs. Um, some of these things that we find that we know as beetles, we'll be calling them bugs today. And it's good to know the difference between a uh, true bug and a beetle. And I should have, or, uh, and I should have uh, posted a comparison, but I did not. But you'll notice with the beetles, check out their backs. Uh, they all have a, a line that goes straight down the middle of their back. Um, yeah, a true bug would have a crisscross across their back there that you would be able to see. Uh, beetles do not. So here's the anatomy of a beetle. Uh, beetles, of course, they are a bug. So if they're an insect, how many legs do they have? Insects. Think about it. They have a bunch of them. Do they have a hundred? No. Do they have a uh, Two, no, they have six of them. They have three pair of legs. They have four legs, middle legs, and back legs uh, that they use for all different purposes. Uh, as with any insect, they have three body parts. Here you see their head. And just like you, well, maybe not just like you, maybe some of you, um, you will find eyes. Uh, mouth parts and antenna. I don't know if any of you have antenna or not. Maybe you do. Um, that'd be interesting to uh, see. So some of them have that. Uh, so they have that. Of course, their uh, head is above their shoulders, above their thorax. 
which is the midsection of their body. That's where everything is attached, just like you, you and me. Uh, that's where your legs are in your arms are attached to, um, if you were a beetle, your wings would be attached to your thorax as well. And then we drop down below and that's where you have their abdomen. Their abdomen is where their gutty works and all other kinds of organs, their soft spots are, is there in their abdomen. Uh, beetle life cycle is uh, interesting. This is where a lot um, happens with insects. Uh, insects, they start off as eggs, uh, and then they hatch, and, and each, each uh, beetle is a little different. Beetles can vary in their life cycles, um, and not so much in the stages that they have, but in their appearance and what they actually are. A lot of times, um, they go from their egg to their, their larval mode, and the larva can look very different from beetle to beetle. Sometimes they look like a giant worm. Um, or a thin worm. Sometimes they just kind of look like a, a, a thing, a blob that just kind of is, is there to eat. Um, sometimes they, you can see us with this guy here. He looks somewhat worm-like, but clearly it has some legs there. Uh, if you look real close when you find a grub or a beetle larva, you can see that they have legs and often even a small beetle head. Um, but they can look very different uh, depending on uh, the beetle. Uh, in the next stage of a beetle's life, it will turn into a pupa. That's kind of where it goes into a stage where it's in between the larva. Oftentimes, the larva form, all they do is eat. The larva, they just eat. Um, that's where a lot of, um, that's where a, a lot of uh, beetles, they, when they, they are harmful, that's where they cause their harm is in their larval stage. Think of the emerald ash borer. Um, when it's in its larval stage, that's when it chews on the, the, the wood of the, the ash tree. Um, that's where they get in and they, they chew and do all their damage. Um, you know, a lot of different grubs, they get into our plants um, in our gardens and in our, our yards, our grass. They get in and they chew the roots and end up killing the plant. Um, they do a lot of eating. Uh, the pupa stage, not at all. They just kind of uh, think of it as their uh, cocoon. It, it's like a cocoon, like you butterflies, they go into a stage where they form a cocoon and uh, hang out while their body goes through the final stages of its metamorphosis into adulthood. Uh, that's what the pupa does. Now here's another one. This one is entirely different. Here we're seeing the complete metamorphosis of a ladybug. See, it starts off as eggs, the same, but then it turns into this guy. Have a look at this guy here. I bet you've probably seen these maybe um, around your house on your plants outside. These yellow, these orange and black spotted guys, they kind of walk around. Uh, I used to see these for years before I learned what they were. Never had a clue, but they're ladybug larvae. So the ladybug larvae, they're, they're, they're smaller. They don't look anything really like a worm, do they? They just look like another form of insect. And then they turn into their pupa, which is kind of this blobby guy here. And then they become a fully functioning adult. Um, beetles. Beetles can be found on every continent except Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica seems to not have much of anything, probably because it is so cold. Um, but beetles are not there. Uh, beetles feed on a variety of materials. Uh, this is where they can be very beneficial to us. Uh, many beetles um, eat pests. Um, ladybugs, they eat aphids and things like that. Um, so some of them can be very, very beneficial to us by eating uh, pests. Uh, they feed on decaying materials. Um, and this is both as a larva and an adult. Uh, they'll feed on decaying material, decaying uh, plant and animal life. Um, a lot of times if you lift, uh, lift up a dead animal you found, you might find scare beetles um, or cadaver beetles hiding underneath. And what they do is they break down all of that rotting material, they eat it, and they help keep our, uh, our environment clean. They're kind of uh, what you could call nature's vultures, huh? Um, some even eat poop, uh, dung beetles. Dung beetles take care of poop. I don't know that we have dung beetles in, in Pennsylvania. I've seen them before 
and other places I've lived, uh, but they often will um, pile poop up and roll it into a ball, and then they'll push it with their front legs while guiding it with their back uh, to get it places where they can eat it. And they help keep it clean. Um, other animals, though, are pests. Uh, they, like I say, with the um, the grubs that, that damage our crops and things, many uh, in beetles will eat our different crops and things. Think of the emerald ash borer um, and the damage it's done to our local ash uh, tree population. Beetles can be very small. Have a look at this guy. This is a feather-winged beetle. He's super tiny. It is the smallest beetle species on Earth. And here you see the Hercules beetle. It is the largest beetle on Earth. Um, now, one thing that we might want to talk about a little bit is how do you tell if it's a male or a female? Is there any way to tell without getting too personal with a beetle? Well, one way, some beetles have these large growths off of their head like this guy here. He has this huge horn. Uh, that's something that the males will have. Male scarab, some scarab beetles, some dung beetles, things like that. They'll have horns or larger antenna. Um, that'll help tell if you've got a, a male or a female. This guy is definitely a big bull, isn't he? Look at the size of this guy. How big is he? How about that? That's a beetle as big as your fist. That's pretty, that's, uh, pretty amazing that they get to be that big. And he has some neat coloration there, too. Look at those metallics that he has. See, that's one of the things that makes beetles so special is their coloration. Now, beetles, they just don't live on the ground. Beetles can live underwater too. Here we've got a predaceous diving beetle. Predaceous diving beetles, they live in the water. Uh, they like to come, they come up near the surface and they collect oxygen on hairs on their abdomen. And they dive around in the water. They eat other aquatic insects. If they're a big enough guy, some of these guys get to be pretty big. They can be a couple inches uh, long. Um, they'll eat small minnows, they'll eat small fish, they'll eat tadpoles, uh, even small frogs if they can catch them. Um, they are they are very, very um, voracious predators, really, really neat insects. They're, they're really fun to watch swim around. And you can see he's using this, this little guy right here is using his back legs like oars. You see that? Their eggs, their legs will stretch out to their sides and they have these uh, hairs and that allows them to act as paddles as the insect swims and looks for food. Um, they are very fun to watch if you can find one in good clear water. Uh, some insects here like this, uh, this stag beetle, they can be dark or dull in coloration. It helps them blend in with their surroundings. Uh, this right here is, it's a, like I say, it's a stag beetle. Now, one thing we can tell about it Look, okay, it's got small mouth parts. Perhaps this is a female. And if she's in the, you know, for living on the ground and living around the, the wood and the debris on the ground, she'd be kind of tough to see. Others, well, they can be pretty bright, can't they? Have a look at this. This is a June bug, not a true bug. Uh, it's got the straight line down the back. It's got where the uh, these outer wing casings here. And I should have sh talked more about that when we were going over the anatomy. But these outer wing casings are called elytra. And they open up and there are the soft membranous wings underneath, the paper-like wings that are underneath there. And it has this straight line there. If it were a bug, it would have a crisscross working uh, that we would see instead. But it has a straight line that tells us that it's a beetle, not a bug. But it's called, we still call it a June bug. And these are stunning. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these or not. We do have them around here, though I don't think I've seen one for a couple of years. Um, when I was growing up, I used to see them everywhere, uh, all through the summer. It wasn't summer unless you had seen June bugs. And we, we would find them everywhere and we'd let them crawl all over us and catch them. Uh, they are such neat, neat beetles. Um, just look at those colors that they have, those golds and greens. Um, unfortunately, the, the grub, of this uh, beetle does feed on um, on our lawns. So a lot of times 
uh, you know, there can, they can be considered pests. Another brightly colored beetle is this lady right here, the ladybug. Have a look at her. Again, not a, not a true bug. Um, ladybugs are beneficial. They eat pests, they eat aphids from our plants, uh, scale bugs. Um, and they don't just come in this orange color. They can come in a variety. Uh, this is a, a true ladybug, but they can be all different kinds. Oh, Diane, just you wait. You know I wouldn't miss those. Um, they can be in all different kinds of uh, shades of orange and yellow and red and different dotage. Um, but I think a lot of times one thing that we don't notice when we see ladybugs, we don't notice the head they have. I think we often see this part of their thorax and these white dots and always assume that those are the head. Uh, whenever kids have uh, coloring pages or, you know, in our crafts and things, you don't usually see that. You just see that. And I think it's assumed that these white spots are its eyes. But have a look at its head. It actually has a beautiful little face there, doesn't it? They are neat insects. Diane. And I wouldn't leave you hanging. This is also my favorite. Um, I had not seen any yet this year. Uh, Monday, I was on a walk. I had to. I went to check on something um, and took a walk and was over on the, the drive near Tuckamone, and I found one. These are dogbane beetles. Dogbane beetles are so neat. Um, they they are stunning. Um, and, and depending on how you're looking at them at the light depends on the coloration you're going to see, that color will shift. Um, dogbane beetles, they feed on a, a, a group of plants that we call dogbanes. Um, they're related to milkweed. Um, they are poisonous since they're related to milkweed, um, but this guy has found a way to be able to eat them. Now, another interesting thing about the dogbane plants is that they create a sticky, oozy sap, and it is designed to glue um, animals' mouth parts together. So if the poison doesn't kill them, then it's sticky sap can glue their mouth parts together and then they can't eat. And that's supposed to protect them. Well, the dog bane beetle has found a way to get out of that. It finds a spot where it can chew on the plant and then it walks backwards on the plant, dragging its mouth across, thus cleaning its mouth of the sap. Um, but these, these are, oh, these are such stunning beetles. If you ever uh, have a chance to find some, uh, just pick one up carefully and have a look at it for a little while because they are they are really, really magical. It's so neat to be able to find these types of things um, in nature. And something like this, we often think of it as being exotic, that you have to travel to Africa or uh, Southeast Australia, or, uh, Asia, Australia, some uh, jungle to find something as gorgeous as this. But you may have these right in your backyard. Um, we have them in our butterfly. We often find them out front in the um, bluebird meadow. Um, they're, they're gorgeous. Another gorgeous bug that if you're lucky to see, uh, you got to keep your eye open for these. We have these around here. I see them on our trails. Um, I spot these out behind the building in the middle, in the summer. This is a tiger beetle. Um, and they come in a variety of colors and patterns. But have a look at this green guy here. Oh, look at that shine. Now, why on earth do you think they call it a tiger beetle? Hmm? Look at that. Look at that mouth. Now, with a mouth like that, what do you think they feed on? Well, they feed on other animals, other insects, of course. Uh, that's why it's called a tiger beetle. They are ferocious hunters. Not only are they ferocious, they are fast. They are one of the fastest insects. Um, they zip around really quick. Um, they're, they're creatures of habit, I believe. Um, you often will often find these. Um, one will live in a certain area and it will patrol that area. It'll walk around. And when it walks, it moves so fast that it goes blind. It can't see. So it will zip from one spot to the other. And in those moments when it's zipping across the ground, it's going so fast. Um, that it doesn't see. So they only go in quick bursts. But when they find something to eat, they are on it in a flash. It's uh, stuck in those big trap-like jaws. Here we see one that's a little duller in coloration. See, it's, it's more of a brown, but look real close at that. You can see some stunning iridescence in there around its face, the 
base of its elytra. You just really, really see that even, even when a, an insect like this is a bit more dull, it's still quite stunning. All right, so remember the stag beetle we saw earlier? Well, here, this is a stag beetle as well. This is a large male stag beetle. Look at those mandibles it has there. They look like horns. That's what gives it the, gives it the name uh, stag beetle. It looks like it's got big elk horns or deer horns, but those are its mandibles. Uh, those are its uh, parts of, of its mouth. Why on earth do you think it would need that? Well, the other guy, the tiger beetle, it used it for catching food, right? Well, these guys wrestle. And what they do is they use that to help uh, fight for their territory. So if you get two male stag beetles come together, um, they're not going to like it, and they will wrestle. They will tussle. And they'll push and they'll shove, and they won't stop until one is uh, thrown off the log they're fighting on. And it's kind of like an insect version of King of the Hill. Uh, they are really neat. Uh, we do find those in our woods from time to time. They are around here. Uh, you can find those by rolling rotten logs. So the next time you're in the woods, next time you're here on our tra trails, next time you're out back um, in your yard, if you've got a log, give it a roll. See if you're lucky enough to find one of these guys under it. Another cool looking beetle that we have here. We find these out in our bluebird meadow as well. Uh, this is a milkweed borer beetle. Um, they are quite striking. They've got a real beautiful red orange coloration with black dots. Um, this is a bug though that unfortunately it can be a bit of a pest because they feed on milkweed. And well, what uses milkweed that we're trying to protect right now? Well, monarch butterflies, of course. Monarch butterflies, they feed on milkweed. Um, and we're trying to keep milkweed safe and trying to keep the, the um, monarch butterfly populations uh, growing and not declining. So we want to have plenty of milkweed. Unfortunately, these guys eat milkweed as well. Um, they chew on it and they kill it. And that doesn't give much of a chance for uh, monarchs, does it? Uh, these are striking uh, insects, though, to find. Um, if you see them, you can catch them. Usually they will um, curl up. They'll pull their legs up and they'll let you catch them into your hand and you can hold them and have a nice look at them. I would warn against squeezing them though because they do have pretty powerful mouth parts and uh, they may bite. Um, I don't think they're considered sole, you know, fully pests, so I don't think it's something that we want to control. Um, so please don't kill them, but you know, just keep a, an eye open. Another wonderful summertime uh, visitor are these guys here, the click beetles. These are another insect I used to love finding as a kid. Uh, these guys are really, really neat. You can tell a click beetle because they have a long oval shaped body that's broken in half about a third of the way through. And what they do there is they have this real neat way where they can catch these spines here and there's a notch on there their back where they can get it locked in place and when they unclick it they pop and they flip up into the air now why do you think they would do that what would be a good reason for doing that well the reason why they do that is to scare off um, predators so if you have a predator that's coming that's uh, that's going to possibly eat one of these uh, i catch my cats playing with them uh they do do this click and that scares them off. Of course, in my cats, they just become more curious about it and they usually click them to death. But they're neat to find. So if you ever find one of these and you want to see it click, just gently put a little bit of pressure on its back and you'll get to see it happen. Neat summertime bug. Another neat summertime bug is this guy. Can you guess what it is? Do we have, have any ideas? Now this if you guessed firefly, you were right. It is a firefly. And fireflies are wonderful animals. We still have tons of them happening uh, around right now. And they are indeed a beetle. Fireflies are, even though their, their elytra isn't quite as, as hard and um, stiff and shell-like as uh, other beetles, they are still a beetle. 
Um, and they are, are so, so neat. I believe we have two species of um, beetles here in Pennsylvania. One of them is the Big Dipper. Um, they're called Big Dipper uh, fireflies and you notice them because they kind of do a, a dip. If you follow my cursor, they kind of go up and they light and they dip and they light and they dip and they light. And then the other kind, um, I'm not sure, um, I'm losing what it is in my head now, but they flash faster. They have a, a, a flasher, uh, faster flashing is the other, the other species. Um, the Big Dipper also, I believe is either, I don't know. So anyway, we have plenty of these. I saw a lot of them last night, about a month, month or so ago, I happened to come out here at nighttime and check our bluebird meadow and it was like a disco. There were so many uh, flashing lights. So at my own fireworks show, uh, there were so many that were flashing. We're only just starting to see those around our yard at home um, in, in large numbers. Uh, so they're out. They are another great summertime visitor. Uh, uh, beetles, interesting creatures, both good and bad. Um, wonderful creatures to find. Find them around your yard. Uh, right now, this time of year, there's so many different kinds. I, I didn't even touch the tip of the iceberg on all the different types of beetles that we have here. Remember, they make up a, a quarter of all life on Earth. So that's just, you know, that, that's, you, this is just a, a teeny tiny hair-like fraction of uh, what there actually is. So get outside, uh, look under some leaves, look under some logs, check and see what kind of cool uh, beetles you can find. Maybe you'll find a beautiful dog vein beetle. Who knows? But get out and have a look. Excellent. Thank you so much, Robert. Beetles are super cool. Um, if you like insects or are interested in connecting with some other insects, um, tomorrow, um, July 18th at 2 o'clock, um, we are hosting a North American butterfly count on our property. You can come out um, for that with Miss Diane. Um, we are also doing, um, on the 28th of July, um, I believe at 5 o'clock, we're doing a virtual um, animal adoption program. Um, so get a chance to see some of the other animals that, um, that Mr. Robert has shown us throughout our time together um, that live at Bucks Audubon. Um, we'll do some symbolic adoption. So if you're interested in that, um, check out our website um, for more information. And definitely make sure you're getting outside, exploring, looking around. It's amazing what you find when you go outside and observe. So thank you all very, very much for coming. Yep. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. Hey, Robert, can you stay on for a minute? Yes. Thank you.